I'm over at my buddy's garage. We're gonna be doing a few things to improve this place. We're gonna be adding insulation, some sheathing on the walls. For insulation, we chose to go with the rock wool. Uh, this is meant for two by sixes, 16 on center, which is what we have. This three quarter inch AC plywood is the shelf material. It's gonna be the last item to go in place. So I'm gonna move this out, set it on some sleepers in the driveway, and that way it's out of my way and I can get to the sheathing uh, OSB, which I'm gonna need first. I moved the material outside and it's stacked now in the order that I'm gonna need it. I've moved all this stuff away from the walls and took a lot of things outside. So at this point, you just have to start looking for things that are in your way. I'm doing the top four feet of the wall today, and this block is from the roofers. It was installed as part of their staging for outside. I'm gonna take that down. Uh, my buddy has some of these hooks up here. I'm gonna unscrew those ones. Okay, I've pulled every nail and block that was in the way in the top four feet of this wall. This is a very typical framing detail you might see. The framers put a 2x6 on each side of the corner, and that's so that the drywallers have something to fasten to. That's great for the drywallers. It's difficult for me where I need to insulate this corner. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually remove one of these studs. This is the redundant one. This one I don't want to move. So the sheathing is fastened to this guy, and I can look in and see that there's another stud running this direction, which is why this is the redundant. So I'm going to cut the nails that are uh, going to be in the bottom and the top. You see how this one is not fastened to the sheathing? My theory is, why would you want to spend any time or any money doing a job that's only going to work 50%? Because that's what you're giving up if you don't get these tiny details. So a tiny percent of space missed contributes to a huge chunk of energy loss. It's not a lineal scale. With that corner vacuumed out, you can clearly see where the stud sat and the nails that I cut with the reciprocating saw. At this point, you're probably saying, it's gotta be ready for insulation, right? But wait, there's more. Uh, we want to air seal this cavity before we put the insulation in. We're going to be using rock wool bat insulation, which is not an airtight product. So we're going to air seal the cavity before putting it in. I'm going to be using some SIGA Resan tape, uh, but you can use a lot of different types of flashing tapes and air sealing tapes that are out there. I went and got my glove so that I won't get any splinters, hopefully. And then you want to press that in. When the framers built this, they ripped this sheathing shy of the top plate. So there's a big gap here, a good quarter of an inch. I have to make sure that I air seal that. I'm not a fan of this detail. I prefer when the uh, framers go up and lap onto the top plates and that helps lock everything down. Don't forget to go ahead and air seal any holes left over from staging. After I've air sealed those sheathing joints, which tape works really well for, I'm now going to air seal the corners between the stud and the sheathing. Now for that, tape is not the best product. Instead, I'm going to use a, a polyurethane caulking uh, because it can really get into those corners. Now if any of you are thinking this is a lot of work, it is. It's a lot easier to air seal a structure from the outside. My favorite way of air sealing a structure is taping the sheathing joints on the exterior. That, then you don't have to do any of this caulking or the work on the inside. It's a lot easier. And if you want to check out an example of that, I'll link in the description below to an air sealing video of how I built my garage where I taped the exterior joints. As you can see, I caulked the corners. But that big gap at the top, I use one part expanding foam. One part expanding foam is better for a big crack. Here, I just couldn't get the caulking gun in because the stud cavity was too narrow. Also, wherever there's wires that exit, foam those as well. All the stud bays are air sealed, they're prepped, 
So now we can start putting the rock wool insulation into them. Both rock wool bats and fiberglass bats are both really horrific. Make sure you, you dress appropriately. Uh, gloves, uh, goggles, and a mask uh, to protect myself. Uh, as far as cutting the rock sole, uh, it doesn't compress the same way that fiberglass bats do, so you don't want to use a small razor blade. Uh, what I did is, uh, this morning I just picked up the cheapest $1 uh, knife I could. It's just a kitchen knife. Uh, you want to get something that's serrated. Uh, a bread knife is really good, the, the long serrations, uh, better than these little serrations that are on this. But plan on using it for one project and then tossing it out because it's going to dull quick. So push it up to the top, compress this side, and slide it to the rear. Notice I put my hand like this and I'm compressing it in and then with my fingers and bring it all the way to the rear. What you're going for is full um, contact. The bat needs to be all the way up against the sheathing and against the studs and all the way out to the front. This stud cavity has a wire. Now that's going to prevent me from sliding the rock wool in easily. So I'm going to take the rock wool bat and I'm going to put it against the wire first. That I take the bat and I split the bat to go around this wire. Okay, I'm making sure that it gets all the way up into the corner, all the way to the very top. When you measure the cavity, you look down here and we're at like 32 and 3 eighths, and you, maybe I'll cut that one at 33. You want to cut it a little bit longer or a little bit wider than whatever it is. So what I do is I just run this out to 33 and then I can put my knife right on the edge and I can make a nick. Now I know where that is and I can just eyeball square because it doesn't matter to be perfect. Well, I have the upper four feet of insulation in place, and that's all the insulation that I'll be installing for this project, and then my buddy's gonna take over from here down. I'm gonna start with the sheathing to go here, and in order to make the end of the sheathing line up, I'm gonna cut off a little bit. Now that piece that I cut off, I can reuse into this corner as my nailer. I probably should have put this nailer in before, but it's fine, I'm putting it in now. It's just I'm using uh, screws from the outside, whereas before I could have used some screws from the inside. I pre-drilled these screws so that I won't split off this uh, last little bit of stud. So I'm going to put some glue on all the studs where this piece of sheathing is going to lie and then it can make the front uh, air seal. So it doesn't have to be glue, but that's what I got, that's what I'm using. It could also be acoustical sealant or caulking. My buddy brought me in just for the upper four feet because I'm going to be building some shelves up here. Now he's going to be continuing down the process. When you go to take the next piece of OSB and you want to butt it up to this one, this uh, horizontal seam needs to be air sealed as well. Now that needs to be done with either taping it or what he might be doing in his case is he might be putting a bead of caulking on here before he butts the next one up to it. Then it has to be installed inside a six-sided enclosed cavity. So we enclose the top, the front, back, sides, and the bottom. Those are your six sides. Now I haven't done the bottom yet. Like I said, that's my buddy. But you get the idea. This is how a bat needs to be installed to make it work to its rated R value. See, if wind blows through there, it takes away all those trapped warm air pockets. And you're paying for that insulation. You want it to work even when it's windy outside, even when the temperatures are extreme outside. And in order to make it do that, 
it needs to be inside an airtight enclosure. Now that's different than say, if this was dense pack cellulose, like what I have in my home, it doesn't require all this, but it still benefits from an exterior air barrier. This was a lot of fun. I hope you um, took something away. The bat insulation needs to be inside a six-sided enclosed cavity in order to achieve its rated R value. All right, hey, thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.